Hello everyone, welcome to soundproofguide.com. In this video, I'll be talking about how to soundproof the entire home when you're in a new construction or you're in a renovation stage. Now, it's a lot easier to soundproof walls and floors and ceilings when you're in the construction phase because of course, the walls are all, everything's open. So you can properly decide which room you want to soundproof and which room it's that it's not really worth it. So you're not spending a lot of extra money for rooms that you don't really need to soundproof. So that's what we'll talk about in this video. So of course, a lot of new constructions, you start with the floors. So how would you soundproof the floors in this category? Well, usually you don't really have to worry too much about it you have to soundproof the ceiling underneath. It's a lot easier to soundproof underneath the floor than trying to soundproof the floor. However, if you're going to want to do something to the floor, one thing that you can do is to add a second layer of floorboard and have something in between the floorboards, something like mass-loaded vinyl. Mass-loaded vinyls, you can buy them in rolls and they basically weigh about a pound to two pounds a square foot. So this is quite dense, it's quite heavy, but it's not very thick, which is perfect to put in between two floorboards to basically help mitigate the vibrational noise of footsteps going through the floor. One thing that's good with mass loaded vinyl, you just put it on the floor, unroll it, and basically you're done. You just add the floorboard on top of it and it will give you that extra soundproofing for just a few dollars a square foot. And this thing is pretty dense, so it will really help in mitigating a lot of the footsteps vibrational noise. So that's one thing to really look into. Another thing that people suggest is an acoustical compound, but I wouldn't really suggest this type of material on the floor because it won't really work as well as something like mass loaded vinyl it is a physical barrier that is quite thick and dense this compound does work pretty good between two layers of drywall but not so much on the floor so if somebody tells you to put it on the floor i would just remember this tip and say not worth it whatsoever so now it's time to pick your flooring material there are different types of material out there that makes less noise than others. For example, many people like the look of wood floors, but they can get pretty noisy once they start to age, especially. All the creaking and rubbing against each other throws some people off. Having an underlayment underneath any type of floor out there is an advantage. It gives people more opportunities to go with the kind of flooring they want rather than settling. Just a quick pause, if you like this type of content, consider subscribing to our channel. And also feel free to leave a comment. I would love to hear your feedback and also your questions that I would do my very best to answer. Thank you. Next thing to look at is carpeting and rugs. For those talking about soundproofing very seriously, carpetings and rugs are quite essential. Once the flooring is installed, there is an underlayment for the carpet and then the carpet itself. It might seem excessive for some people to have so much soundproofing material underneath the floor and on top of the floor, but it is something that a lot of people have counted on throughout the years. Even something like mass loaded vinyl underneath the carpet, if you didn't put it in the subfloor, is one way to help soundproof the floor. And it's quite easy to do so. Now it's time to look at the walls. Of course, the walls, this is the easiest time to soundproof the walls because everything is open. So you can basically do whatever you want from the get-go. Now, one thing you need to do is choose the walls that you want to soundproof because of course, you don't need to soundproof every single wall in the house. Maybe some people want to do this, but most people only want at least one room or one ceiling or floor soundproof to accommodate perhaps a media room, home theater, or just a space where they want it to be quiet. If they're working some sort of shift work where they have to sleep during the day, this is a good opportunity to do so. Now that the wall is open, the first thing to do for that particular wall is to add soundproofing insulation. Now, soundproofing insulation will work a little bit better than your typical pink insulation. And if you're only gonna be doing a few walls, then it's really worth it to be putting this type of insulation in the wall. If you have the spray foam insulation, 
this type of insulation really doesn't do much in terms of soundproofing. So if you're thinking of using spray foam insulation and thinking that that will be enough to soundproof a wall, well, I'm sorry, it will not be enough to really do anything. So the first thing is add the insulation and then your drywall. Now, of course, I would recommend a five, eight inch drywall. It's thicker and it will help soundproof the wall a lot better. Now to go a step further is to add an acoustical compound in between your second layer of drywall that you're gonna be putting on top of your first layer of drywall. Now you can put an acoustical compound or you can go with a mass loaded vinyl, something of the sorts to just add that extra bit of soundproofing. Now don't forget to add some putty pad around the electrical box to seal all those holes because this is something that a lot of people never think about. Now if this box is not covered, the sound will easily travel through the holes in the box into the next room. So that's something that is relatively cheap to do, to add a putty pad and to just basically take care of it once and for all. Now it's time to look at which doors you want to install in your house. Now if you're only soundproofing one or two rooms, this is quite easy. Just install a solid core door instead of a hollow core door. Now the difference is, one door is hollow and the other one is completely solid, solid wood throughout. So that will add a lot more soundproofing than just your typical interior doors that basically is in most houses. Once the solid core door is installed, the easiest thing to do to finish that door off is to add a door sweep. Now the type of door sweeps that I always recommend are the ones with a rubber bottom. I find that these types of door sweeps works a lot better than the brush door sweeps. Those door sweeps are more meant for bugs and ants and not so much for soundproofing. So now the next thing to look at are the windows. So choose your windows carefully because of course soundproof windows or I guess windows with double or triple panes will be a little bit more expensive than just a regular window, but they will provide much better soundproofing than just your standard single pane window. So once these brand new windows are installed, the easiest thing to do to basically finish that job off is to just add acoustical caulking around the window and around the window frame, just to add that little extra. Now these type of caulkings will not dry up and crack over time, which would let some sound in. And now the last thing that you'll want to look at are the ceilings. So basically the rooms that you'll want to soundproof the ceilings, there's a few steps that you'll want to consider. So one thing that you can do is to add some soundproofing insulation. The next thing that you can do is put your five eight inch drywall. The third thing is to add a resilient channel and then another five eight inch layer of drywall. Now this will be extremely effective in soundproofing the ceiling. It will be a lot more costly. That's why it would be best to just basically pick and choose which rooms you find most important that you'll basically find it more effective to soundproof the ceiling. If you wanna save a little bit of money on this step, the one thing that I would maybe take out is the insulation. But the two layers of drywall with the resilient channel in between will be very effective. So consider that. Now one little tip that a lot of people fail to mention and fail to do is to cover the electrical boxes of the light fixtures just like you did with the electrical boxes of the outlets. Of course soundproofing a new construction will add a lot more cost but that cost will be very justified because it's not something that you will regret in the future because a lot of people will put a lot more money into things that you can easily change later on, like light fixtures and even kitchen countertops and cupboards. You can change that later on, but to rip out the walls and to add insulation and to add resilient channel will be a lot more difficult and a lot more costly in the future while everything is all complete. So it is something to consider. And also, if you wanna put your house up for sale and you advertise that you have soundproof walls, that will add a lot of value to your home. So essentially, it's not something that you will probably regret in the long run. 
Feel free to take a look at many of our other YouTube videos and also some of our articles on our website soundproofguide.com. Don't forget to click the like button if you enjoyed this video and also consider subscribing to our channel if you like our content. Also feel free to leave us a comment below if you have any soundproofing questions of your own. We will certainly try our very best to help you. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again in the next video or any other videos in our channel. Thank you very much.